Okay, we'll get started. All right, this is what we did in the last class, is to introduce the idea of MOSFETs. Okay, talk about MOSFETs. Okay, there are two flavors of MOSFET, M channel and P channel. Okay, it's a three terminal device or a four terminal device. It's really a four terminal device. But for simplification, we look at three terminals. Um, and when we need it, we consider the fourth terminal. Okay, then we look at the different regions of operation of NMOS transistor. Okay, the different regions of operation are cut off, saturation, and linear. We looked at the conditions for cutoff, saturation, and linear. Okay, we looked at the uh, we looked at the terminal characteristics that determine the linear cutoff or saturation region. Okay, and then how it is dependent on the threshold voltage as well. Okay, that's something we discussed in the last class. So this is called a voltage controlled current source. We also discussed how this applies to the PMOS transistor with three different regions of operation. What I have not shown, what I have not discussed is something in between, something in between on and off, okay? Something in between on and off is, uh, um, let's see, sub threshold. Subthreshold region. We'll talk about it hopefully today when we. This is not quite on, this is not quite off, this is leakage. Okay, it is in between on and off because it's supposed to be off, but it's not quite off. It's not supposed to be on, but it's still on. There is some kind of leakage current, very small amount of leakage current um, in this region of operation. Okay, so that's the idea of uh, uh, MOSFET regions of operation. Okay, then we looked at the device structure for the MOSFET. Okay, and we correlated the layout. We correlated the layout to the different terminals of the MOSFET, the gate, the drain, the bulk, the source. Okay, one of these terminals is floating. That's the gate terminal. See, the gate terminal is it's floating in thin air. What is in between the um, gate and the channel is an insulator. It's an insulator that is sitting between the gate and um, the channel. Okay, so that's the reason why we like to call gate as floating. And the fundamental idea that we discussed was the width and length of the MOSFET, which are shown here, to be the distance between the source and drain, that's the length, and the um, depth of this guy into the plane of the paper, that's the width. They're important design parameters, discuss that. Okay, and then I started talking about the operation of MOSFETs. What happens when I apply a positive voltage on the gate of N channel MOSFET? It attracts a corresponding channel of negative electrons that form continuous um, channel between source and drain, and then the MOSFET is ready to turn on. Okay, and then I talked about the oxide capacitance. The fact that the positive voltage here is separated from the negative, potent, negative charge carriers down below with an insulator. That is a fundamental capacitance, which is given as C oxide times W times L, where C oxide is the oxide cap per unit area, okay? And then we talked about overdrive voltage, which is defined as VGS minus VTH. And then how the PMOS transistor operates by applying a negative voltage on the gate. A channel of positive holes 
is formed between the source and drain and it is ready to turn on it is ready to conduct current once there is enough potential on the drain or on the source with respect to the drain then there is a current flow then i talked about the idea of um, including both nmos and pmos transistors on the same wafer leading to the complementary metal oxide logic okay cmos logic and i also showed you why it is imperative that we reverse bias these diodes okay we want to reverse bias the diodes uh, the pn junction diodes between the source and body and the drain and body we discussed all of this in the last class okay and in an effort to do that in an effort to reverse bias these diodes parasitic diodes these diodes are parasitic we have to connect the substrate of the p junction to the lowest potential okay the p substrate we have to um, bias the p substrate body to the lowest potential so the n mos so let me write it out here the n mos the body of the n mos is tied to the lowest potential okay the body of the p mos shown um, the p mos is shown using this guy this is n mos okay here is p mos the bulk or the body of the p mos should be tied to the power supply okay so this is in order to ensure that the diodes are reverse biased typically we typically do that um, sometimes we also like to tie the bulk and source together okay but in most often conditions we like to tie the nmos bulk to the most negative power supply and pmos bulk to the most positive power supply okay so that's the fourth terminal bulk terminal questions please questions so far okay all of this we covered in the last class okay so let me add a page here and mos transistor regions of operation okay you can divide them into two so far that we saw okay it is off when vgs is less than v threshold so based on vgs we can define whether it is on or off it is on when vgs is greater than or equals to v threshold okay it can be on in one of two regions okay it can be on when it is on it can be on in saturation or in linear region okay it's l i n e linear saturation okay once it is on i have to look at vds if vds less than vgs minus v threshold i call this to be in linear triode resistive unsaturated so on and so forth vds greater than or equals to vgs minus v threshold okay then i know it is in saturation okay this is for nmos transistor now this is what i'm going to do i'm going to give you a new um, idea here the idea of the drain current in linear and the saturation regions let's say okay, that's not enough okay linear and the saturation regions okay let's see let me draw the n channel mosfet transistor over here okay 
differently. This is the end channel MOSFET, right? So let me make this a bit thick, that's better. Okay, so here is my brain. Here is the gate, here is the source. Okay, there is a reason to why I draw the NMOS transistor with the terminals um, shown up, down, and in between, like so. I always like to draw the NMOS transistor drain north, okay? The source to the south, okay? And gate in between, okay? That's the idea, and there's a reason to that, and I will talk about that um, reason shortly, okay? What I'm interested in is, what is the drain current, ID, as a function of, as a function of BGS and BDS, okay? This is the relationship I am after, okay? That's what I'm interested in. And this is, um, we look at this in a bunch of different, um, bunch of, from a bunch of different perspectives, okay? ID is mu N, C oxide, W over L, VGS minus VTH. Let's see something I'm going to draw over here. So in the linear region, VGS minus VTH into VDS minus one half VDS squared. Okay, so that is the idea that's the expression for drain current. I don't know what you do with this. If you get tattooed on your hand, that's fine. Um, but it's important that you remember this, okay? ID is one half mu N C oxide. It's not one half, mu N C oxide W over L, VGS minus VTH into VDS minus one half VDS squared. That's in the linear region. In the saturation region, ID is one half mu n C oxide W over L VGS minus VTH the whole square. Okay, let me see if I can. Oops. Okay, in the saturation region, the expression for drain current is this guy. Okay, ID is one half mu n C oxide, mu n is mobility. Of electrons. Okay, C oxide, we found, we discussed C oxide, oxide cap per unit gate area. Okay, we discussed about it. C oxide is epsilon oxide by T oxide, remember? Let me go back. Okay, if I go back, we did discuss about the capacitance of the oxide right here. C oxide is epsilon oxide over T oxide, okay? C gate, capacitance of the gate is C oxide times W times L, okay? That guy, okay? So let me write it again here. ID is one half mu n C oxide W over L VGS minus VTH the whole square. Okay, what observation can you make here? Let's take a look at this and see if you can uh, make an observation, compare and contrast between the current in the linear region and in the saturation region. What's the big difference? When you look at the current between, when you look at the drain to um, drain to 
drain current in terms of the gate source voltages. Okay, what's the big difference between the linear region current, which is shown on the left, and the saturation region current shown on the right? Uh, I don't see any drain to source voltage on the saturation. Thank you. Thank you. That's the observation I was looking for. So in the linear region, ID is mu n C oxide W over L VGS minus VTH into VDS minus one half VDS square in a linear region. In saturation region, ID is simply one half mu n C oxide be less lazy C oxide W over L VGS minus VTH the whole squared in saturation region okay this is not a perfect equation this is we are going to um, enhance this equation a little bit more but the important idea that you want to notice is that in saturation in linear region there is both VGS and VDS terms that affects ID. So ID is a function of VGS and VDS in the linear region. If you look at ID in saturation region, on the other hand, it appears that ID is independent of the drain voltage. It only depends on the VGS value. ID is a function of VGS only in saturation. Okay, so the idea is, and in a, on paper, this is the idea. The idea is that in saturation region, okay, the drain current is independent of the um, VDS value. Let me say that one more time. In theory, in saturation region, The drain current, the current in the drain is independent of the VDS value. Okay, that's, that's a very, very interesting behavior. Okay, can you think of another device that behaves like this? Let's say I have gate drain source okay the drain current id does not depend on vds can you think of any other device that provides the same current for any values of um for any value of the voltage across its terminal. So it does not matter. The voltage across these terminals, VDS, does not matter. Uh, maybe try? I don't know. Maybe you want? Uh, we haven't covered it. Try it. I'm not sure about it. Think about, think about a current source. That's the definition of current source, right? No matter what voltage is across the terminals of a current source, the current is constant. That's exactly the idea here. If you think about it, in saturation, ID is independent of VDS, or at least in theory. In theory, the voltage that you apply between these two terminals that does not matter. The current is going to be constant, okay? That's the definition of a current source. The voltage across the terminals does not matter. The con current is going to be constant. Uh, BJT? Yes, we can talk about BJT as a um, current controlled current device. Sure, but here the 
um, knob that we use to control the current is in saturation region. So in theory, in the saturation region, in saturation region, what happens is ID is not a function of VBS, rather it's simply a function of VGS only. Because you remember the equation one half, mu n, C oxide, W over L, VGS minus VTH, the whole square, okay? In saturation region, of course, this is an ideal scenario. We are going to introduce um, another, uh, another um, slight dependence on VDS. So the idea is, if I were to plot VDS versus IDS or ID, what do you think the relationship between ID and VDS, how do you think the curve appears in saturation region? be a straight line horizontal line it'd be a horizontal straight line thank you very, very right That's correct. That's correct so no matter how much you change the input how much you change the value of the vds as long as it is in saturation region id is going to remain constant so all of this is in saturation region Okay, but if it is in linear region, it will be a um, square law dependent. So all of this is linear region. So if you think about it, here the ID is one half mu n C oxide W over L VGS minus VTH the whole squared. Okay, there is no VDS dependence. But until that point, okay, until you hit VD, um, saturation in the linear region, the current is ID is mu N C oxide W over L VGS minus VTH into VDS minus one half VDS squared. Okay, you see this squared relationship between VDS and ID. That's what gives rise to this parabolic uh, curve. Okay, so that's the idea of uh, that's the idea of uh, the transfer curve. Okay, if you were to calculate the slope of this guy, what would be the slope of this guy? Everybody with me so far? The current in saturation is constant, so it's a horizontal line that is independent of BDS. So should there be brackets? Uh, sorry, sorry. Should, there be, should there be brackets to the right of the W over L yes. in the linear equation? Sorry, my bad. Okay. Like so. Thank you. Let me go back and see if I missed those brackets somewhere else. See? I missed the brackets over there. Included the brackets over there. All right. So thank you. Keep reminding me if I forget something like that. Okay. What else? Now, um, what is the slope of this guy? Maybe we can use the mathematical formula. Right, we can use the mathematical formula, but a horizontal line, what is the slope? Infinity. Slope is defined as the change in y or a change in VDS. Zero. 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 Correct. The slope of a horizontal line is zero. What it means is no matter how much I change the input, the output is really going to change zero. When the numerator is zero, the denominator is going to be um, not the, the overall fraction is going to be zero as well. Okay, that's the idea. So the slope of this guy, if you think about it, the slope when V is IR, right? 
when you do i over v i over v what you get is one over r is i over v okay the slope of this guy therefore let me give me one second the slope represents what is known as transconductance okay or the inverse slope of this guy what is the inverse slope of this guy delta v ds over delta i d that is the small signal resistance of that's the inverse slope this is one over zero is infinity the resistance of an ideal current source is infinity because the inverse slope represents the resistance right r d s and we'll come back to talk about it for now all you have to understand is the slope represents a term that is in the form of change in id over v d s i over v represents the reciprocal of resistance and that equates zero for a constant current source okay when this is zero the inverse of zero is infinity and that terms represents rds we'll come back to talk about that more. okay questions please questions so far okay so what we just saw is the idvds relationship transfer curve id to vds relationship for a particular uh, mosfet at a linear in linear region of operation and saturation region of operation that is linear region and up above is the saturation region okay questions please questions so far Okay, I mentioned there are three regions of operation for a MOSFET. Okay, there is the, oops, I'm going to do this. Okay. Green source, okay. Here is my substrate. That's my recreation of a MOSFET. Okay. okay let's see that's good enough so let me draw n channel mosfet okay n mos transistor with the gate green and source terminals so the idea was that as I apply positive voltage on the gate, okay, electrons begin to line up underneath the underneath the semiconductor, okay, underneath the um, insulator, okay. On top is the metal, and in between is the insulator oxide. Okay, that's why we call it metal oxide, metal oxide semiconductor. Okay, now the idea was that as of now, there is not enough electrons between the source and grain to turn the MOSFET on. Okay, in order for me to be able to form a thick enough channel, a continuous channel, I have to apply enough positive voltage. Okay that particular positive voltage that voltage on the gate where there is a continuous channel between source and drain that is referred to as a threshold voltage so the argument was as vg kept increasing from zero all the way to the power supply at some point when vg reaches the threshold some threshold the number of electrons here is enough to form a continuous channel between on and off and at that time the mosfet turns on
okay so the argument is that when vg is greater than or equals to v threshold the mosfet is on when vg less than v threshold the mosfet is off okay that was the argument right if you don't trust me go back to the equation go back to the relationship that i showed you based on the value of vgs if vgs is less than v threshold the mosfet is off okay when vgs is greater than or equals to v threshold the mosfet is on that's the argument i made as it turns out okay as it turns out this is not an abrupt event that happens okay the turning on of a mosfet is not an abrupt event what happens is when the gate voltage is not quite equals to v threshold voltage okay the mosfet is supposed to be off okay so in this case vgs is less than v threshold but only slightly vgs is very close to v threshold but less than that okay so um, then the mosfet what should is should the mosfet be on or off by definition vgs is less than v threshold if vgs is less than it should be off right it should be off right so by definition when vgs is less than v threshold there should not be any current flowing in between because there is not a continuous channel but there is some there is some leakage current anyways okay there is going to be some current leaking anyways l e a k a leakage current when vgs is less than v threshold but very very close to it okay so if you were to incorporate that that that's not quite on okay the mosfet is not quite off or it's not quite on but it is somewhere in between on and off okay vgs slightly less than v threshold but almost very very close so we call it sub threshold okay sub threshold region okay sub threshold region and it is mostly leakage leakage currents okay so this is in between on and off so the idea is think of think of this current that is flowing as let's say you're trying to close a tap okay when you turn the knob all the way to the um all the way to the close position there may be some teeny tiny amount of water that is dripping through that uh, nozzle okay ever so slightly so there is still some water flow where it is supposed to be off okay um, but in order for you to completely turn the uh, tap off you have to um, do a few more turns okay so the idea is where it is supposed to be off there is still some amount of leakage current flowing pretty similar to a tap okay okay this similar to a tap that is dropping um that's there is some leakage current okay I'm not the best artist there in the world, and I don't want to draw something and make it appear like something else. Okay, so here is the idea: there is a um, when the gate voltage, when the voltage on the gate is less than the threshold voltage. So 
the voltage on the gate is plotted on the x-axis vg okay the drain current is plotted along the y-axis if you see the drain current is in the range of nanoamperes picoamperes so on and so forth okay so there's a very small amount of current this is a logarithmic scale right so when there's a small amount of current that's exponentially dropping off um and vgs is less than vt so the key point is that most things in nature don't just turn off like a light switch okay even so the mosfet does not turn on and off abruptly at the threshold voltage there is still going to be some leakage currents very very small amounts the nano ampere range currents okay in the um in the sub threshold region where it's supposed to be on but it where it's supposed to be off sorry but it's not quite off okay leakage leakage where it's supposed to be off make sense so that's the idea of sub threshold operation of a mosfet questions please questions so far okay so let's continue now um we can extend the same logic further and then we can look at the triode region linear region so on and so forth okay so this is what i'm going to do do you remember i called this guy linear region has a bunch of different names the linear region is also called a resistive region unsaturated uh maybe it's active so that active region yeah yeah you can call it active region it's mostly used in in uh, bjt's the active region okay less so um less so in the mosfets okay this is the region is what we like to call okay and mostly saturation is where we like to operate why do you think we like to operate in the saturation region or let me put it another way what could be one big use of mosfet in a saturation region the current is constant in saturation yes it's a constant current source it can be used as a an independent current source in Uh, as a matter of fact mosfet is very often used as a in a current mirror configuration to provide constant current um throughout the circuit okay so that's the idea one of the applications of mosfet is in saturation region as a good current source because the current is constant okay also um let's see so let me add a page here okay linear region linear region is also called resistive region resistive region okay so id in the linear region id is again mu n c oxide w over l this is the big bracket okay? vgs minus vth into vds minus 1/2 vds squared okay this called a resistive region because um if you zoom in into small enough region of a uh, small enough region of the id bds curve so if you were to do this 
So we looked at the IDVDS curve, didn't we? Okay, this is the linear region. Okay, if you were to zoom in onto small enough region of VDS curve, that small enough region, this teeny tiny region, that's going to appear like a straight line. Or if you were to, um, so when the VDS is really, really small, so the argument is this, when the VDS is small, in this region, between these two, um, these two VGS values, this guy is going to appear similar to a straight line. Okay, what is a straight line? If you plot a relationship between IDVDS and get a straight line, what kind of um, t device is that? Resistor. That's a resistor, right? V is IR. If you were to plot I versus V and see a straight line, that's a resistance right there. So V is IR, Y equals to MX. Okay, that's the idea of a resistance. Here you're plotting V versus I though, but the idea is still the same. It's now you should be able to see why we like to call this region as a linear region or as a resistive region. Okay, if you look at the overall big picture, it's a parabolic response. It appears like a parabola. If you were to extend this beyond the saturation region, it appears like a parabola, okay? But that's not what actually happens. Um, it saturates at this point, okay? Once it hits that point, it saturates there, okay? It saturates at that particular point, okay? And then continues to stay constant over there. Now, um, in a very, very, very small region of um, the linear region, IGVDS, um, IDVDS, you can think of this MOSFET transistor to be a resistor, okay? You can think of this MOSFET transistor to be a resistance, okay? The value of that resistance can be thought of as um, one by, so this is a um, linear region, You can approximate a MOSFET in the linear region as a resistance. Okay, so the resistance R on, I like to call it as R on, is one over mu n C oxide W over L. VGS minus VTH. Okay. That's the idea. Okay, in order to do that, all you have to do is um, get the derivative of this with respect to VDS. Okay, with respect to VDS, partial derivative of all of this with respect to VGS, VDS. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, um, the on resistance, like I mentioned, in a linear region, the MOSFET can be approximated to be a resistance. So if it is resistance, what is its resistance value? So in linear region, the on resistance of MOSFET is approximated, or on is the resistance of between drain and source, okay? So that's the idea. And the textbook likes to call this as K prime, some numbers. So K prime N. So the textbook likes to call K prime N to be mu N C oxide, the process transconductance, and K N to be mu N C oxide, W over L. So this is called the device transconductance. And this is called the process transconductance. 
but I always like to remember this mu and C oxide W over L, VGS minus VTH. So as designers, we can play around with W over L. We can play around with VGS. That's about all the um, leeway we have in terms of uh, modifying the characteristics of the diode, uh, of the B MOSFET, okay? So like I mentioned, in saturation region, you can use the MOSFET as a current source. In a linear region, you can use the MOSFET as a resistor. It's not the best resistor, but you can still use it as a resistor, okay? So the value of that resistance is dependent um, on these parameters, mu and C oxide W over L, um, VGS minus VTH. Okay, that's the triode or the resistive region. Okay, the slope of this guy. Okay, if you were to plot VDS versus ID. Like I mentioned, VDS versus ID, the slope of this guy represents GDS. The inverse slope represents um, the resistance for ID versus VDS curves, okay? The inward slope represents the resistance. The slope represents conductance or transconductance. Okay, the slope represents the transconductance. Let's see the triode region of operation one more time. Okay, so let's look at one plot for now. And then I'll talk about the other um, curves in there as well. Okay, for a given value of VGS, okay, the slope RDS, okay, one over the inward slope RDS, is um, one over mu and C oxide. So this guy is one over mu and C oxide W over F, VGS minus VTH, okay? So this is the um, equivalent of a MOSFET. So if I had a MOSFET, okay, I can replace the NMOS transistor with a resistance, with, a, with an equivalent resistance here. The value of that resistance is given to be this guy. Okay, the value of this resistance is given to be this guy. Okay, now for different values of VGS, as you can see, if I go back to the equation, what do you think happens to the resistance? Okay, when VGS increases. VGS increases. What happens to the R on? Decreases R on. R on decreases. What R, R on is the same as RDS, right? RDS. And what happens to GDS, which is the inverse of that? which is the inverse of um, RDS. So GDS is the inverse of RDS. So when RDS decreases, GDS simply increases. GDS increases, right? When VGS increases, the R on decreases or GDS increases, okay? That's um, what is shown here. Okay, that's exactly what is shown here. As the value of VGS increases, okay, as VGS value goes up, the GDS value is higher and higher. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So um, as you keep increasing the VD, v, G, VGS value, okay, the GDS value goes up. Okay, when VGS value is less than V threshold, okay, let me show it here. 
when the VGS value is less than V threshold off, right? The MOSFET is off. So the resistance is infinity, okay? When the MOSFET is off, it's an open circuit, okay? It's an open circuit off resistance when VGS less than or less than V threshold. Okay, when VGS less than V threshold, the MOSFET is off. We know that, right? We know that the MOSFET is off when VGS is less than V threshold. So when the MOSFET is off and it's an off open circuit, the resistance is going to be infinity and the inverse of resistance, the transconductance is going to be zero. And that's shown using the horizontal red line sitting on top of the x-axis over here. Make sense? Okay, so the channel when the value of VDS is small, when the value of VDS is small, because we are, remember we were zooming in very, very close into a very small region of the um, curve, okay? It can be approximated when VDS value is small, it can be approximated as a resistance. Make sense? So RDS value, decreases as VGS increases. That is because we have seen here, right? R on value, R on is exactly same as RDS in my case, okay? RDS value is one over mu and C oxide, W over L, VGS minus VTH, okay? So as VGS increases, R on value decreases, and that is what is shown here. Okay, so in the triode region, MOSFETs can operate as a switch. Okay, RDS is inversely proportional to VGS. So, like I mentioned, I'm not a big fan of these definitions. Okay, um, the device transconductance is Kn, which is mu n. C oxide W over L, K prime N is process transconductance, okay? I like to remember only one thing, not a million things. Um, but uh, when you're solving problems, this kind of um, device transconductance and, uh, um, and process transconductance, that comes in handy, okay? So the most, most common use of, um, a triode FET is as a switch, okay? It's used as a switch. RDS is a really, really, really small value compared to um, RD. This is your external load resistance. So this is the MOSFET resistance. I have a question. MOSFET is used. Yes. So before we said that um, the current on a MOSFET uh, does not change abruptly and it takes some time uh, to get to zero or increase. So yes. how we can use that as a switch when there is no abrupt change in the current? That's a good point. So what happens is, that's a very good point. So typically what we do is, um, let's take a MOSFET. Okay, the gate value. When the gate value is going from zero to VDD, okay, it has to go through VTH somewhere in between, right? Okay. So when you're gradually increasing the um, ramping up, so when you're plotting time versus VG, this is 
the operation that we looked at, right? We gradually increase uh, the value of the gate value from zero to VDD, correct? And it goes through VTH. What does VDD stand right? for again? VDD is the power supply. Okay. VDD is the positive power supply. Okay. It's the positive power supply. As you go from zero all the way to positive power supply, this is one way of increasing, ramping up the gate voltage from zero to the positive power supply. Another way, and this is the way we frequently use, is to use a clock, okay? That changes from zero to power supply voltage on VDD. So in other words, when the input switches between zero and positive power supply, there can be a much faster change in the drain current as opposed to using this guy. When you're using this guy um, around the threshold voltage, around this voltage, okay, there can be on and off action. So we completely switch between two extremes, hard on and hard off. So the leakage is the subthreshold leakage is less of a problem when we are switching. Does that make sense? Okay, so we'll come back to that later. If, if, if that's not uh, clear to you, um, feel free to um, stop me there and then uh, ask me to go back. But the idea is when we are gradually increasing the threshold of the voltage on the gate, the behavior of MOSFET is different compared to when we are switching between zero and high on the gate value. Okay, it's a different, different um, operation altogether. But that's a good question. Now, so we are talking about VDS versus ID, VDS versus ID, okay? When the VDS is small, the MOSFET is in linear teaching, okay? When the VDS is small, the MOSFET is in linear teaching. Questions, please, questions, other questions so far? Okay. Let's see what else we can do. So I gave you this already. So what we do is the way I'm going forward with the slides is that I am kind of jumping forwards and backwards in an effort to make these concepts simple. So you looked at this uh, equation already in the very beginning of the class, the big brackets, VGS minus VTH times VDS minus one half. VDS squared. So you're very familiar with this equation. And this guy, as you know, VGS minus VT is defined as the VOV or V on or V sat. All of these mean the same thing. VDS sat. Okay? With slight differences, they all mean VGS minus VT. Okay, so that's the idea. Questions, please. Questions so far. Okay. All right. So let's take another closer look at the um, different reasons. So this is, hey, we looked at this already, didn't we? The um, parabolic relationship and the constant current relationship, okay? So this is something we already know. 
in the saturation region the drain current is constant in the linear region it behaves like a parabola okay so the curve bends because of the channel distance increases with vds so on and so forth large signal id equations we know this as well id is mu mc oxide so one half mu mc oxide w over l okay mu mc oxide w over l vgs minus vdh the whole square you are very familiar with both of these equations okay you're very familiar with both of these equations so we kind of um are in a good shape now id is mu c oxide w over l vgs minus vth minus half vds squared into vds and this guy the equations for the drain current in linear and saturation region okay why this is the p mass the p mass you can look at the equations for p mass okay so you see that most of them are using um using uh, vsg instead of vgs okay and vsd instead of vds okay let's see um what else do i need to talk about okay i'm going to go back to the um the symbol of MOSFETs. Let me add a page here. Add a page. Okay. I'm going to give you a very quick and dirty approach. Okay. Quick and dirty approach to look at the um, operation of MOSFETs, whether they are in saturation, linear, or the triode region. Okay. Let me do this. Let me style this to have a very thick value okay and i'm also going to duplicate this okay now let's see this is n mass okay this is p mass like i mentioned there are a bunch of different symbols the drain the gate the source source drain gate okay so let me go back to my this is n channel mosfet this is p channel mosfet okay and i mentioned earlier i mentioned earlier there is a reason to why i like to draw the drain up for the n mos transistor but towards the south in the PMOS transistor. Okay, so here is the idea. If you, how would you eyeball and see if a MOSFET is in saturation, linear, on or off? Okay, when you look at a MOSFET, you don't even have to do the math. When you see the voltages dropping from top to bottom in MOS transistor, most likely it is going to be on and it's going to be on in saturation region okay when you see a pmos transistor when you see the voltages dropping from top to bottom in this fashion six five one okay most likely the nmos is on the pmos is on and it is in saturation region okay we don't know i'm just giving you a very crude method a very very um uh, a crude quick and dirty method we don't even know let's give you the vth n for this guy or vth for this guy to be one volt and vtp for this guy or vthp for this guy to be i don't know two volts okay this is my guess based on the conditions that i have um, seen okay let's verify if this is indeed the case or not who can tell me whether i am right or not
So this goes back to the problem, right? Yeah. So VGS minus VTH is smaller than uh, VD, so it's off. VGS minus VTH, you're comparing that to VD for this problem, right? For the N MOSFET. For the N MOSFET, right? Yeah. So what's the value of VGS? VG minus VS is two volts. So that's one answer that it is off. Your answer is that it is off, right? Is that right or wrong? In order to decide if the MOSFET is on or off, what do you have to look at? Uh, like if it is, VGS is greater than threshold? Correct, you have to compare VGS to the threshold, right? What's the value of VGS? That's VG minus volts. VS. You're comparing that to the threshold voltage, which is one volt in this case, uh -huh. right? So VTH or VTH, N is the same. What is VGS? VG minus VS is two volts, which is greater than the threshold voltage. So the MOSFET is indeed on. Okay, so um, in this case, my intuition that because the voltages are falling from top to bottom, this MOSFET is on is indeed, um, it led me to the right solution. Let us see if it is saturated or not. How do you know it is saturated or not? VDS should be greater than VDS. So you compare VDS to, right? VDS is... So tell me what's going on, correct? Yes, VDS should be... What's the value of VDS? 4 volts. VD minus VS is 4 volts. You compare that to VGS minus V threshold. What's the value of VGS minus V threshold? One. Correct, VGS is two volts, V threshold is one volt. So this guy is one volt. So VDS is greater than VGS minus V threshold. So I'm in saturation region. Does that make sense? Yes. So for the PMOS transistor, for the PMOS VSG should be greater than mod VTT. That is the condition for on. What's the value? Let us see if this is the case or not. What is the value of VSG? Five volts. What's the value of VTP? I gave it to be two volts, right? So it is correct. So it is in fact on. It is indeed on. Okay. Let us check for saturation. V D S V S D should be greater than or equals to V S G minus mod V T P. Uh, professor, uh, why do we use V S G in this, not V G S? Yes, that is because uh, the PMOS, remember, is made up of negative threshold voltage, okay? This is the gate voltage, this is the source, this is the drain. I'll tell you why, take a look at this. What is the direction of the current? Into the source and out through the drain, right? Oops, in through the source and out through the drain. Yes. Okay, so in through the source, oops, out through the drain. Okay, that implies this is at a positive higher potential. The current flows from higher potential to lower potential, right? To lower potential. So this is at a higher potential in PMOS. 
because you remember the arrow was pointing in compared to the green. Okay, that explains the VSD term. V source is at a higher potential than drain. Also, the fact that the gate, you should apply a negative voltage on the gate means that the gate should be lower than the source to attract holes here. Make sense? It's a good question. Okay, so the direction of the current dictates for PMOS and the charge carriers, which are holes, dictate that the source be at a higher potential than drain. The source should be at a higher potential than gate. And that is shown in the diagram here. See, I like to draw the source on the north. Okay, that should be at a higher potential than the gate, okay? Similarly, the source should be at a higher potential than drain. Make sense? For PMOS transistor. For the NMOS transistor, the gate should be at a higher potential than source. The drain should be at a higher potential than source. So the source is negative. The drain is relatively positive. Make sense? Okay, so let's see, VSD is greater than, let me pull this a little down, like so, okay. VSD is greater than VGS, VSG minus VTP. That should be the condition for saturation region. Okay, saturation condition. Okay, what is the value of VSD? nine volts. VSD is nine volts. What is this guy? VSG minus mod VTP. What's the value of that guy? Uh, three. Three? <coughs> VSG is three. Correct, correct, correct. You're right, you're right. Three volts, yeah. So three volts, so VSD greater than this guy. So this condition is satisfied. So my assumption that this is in saturation is in fact correct, okay? Let's do one more problem. Let's do one more problem. Let's do the problem um, that you want to, okay. Okay, I'm going to clear all of this, okay. Professor? Okay, now let me, yes. So in these uh, two types of MOSFET, we have studied uh, N-MOSFET and P-MOSFET. So the current mm -hmm. has a, <clears throat> like um, a specific direction, like from source to drain, and then- and Yes, from yes, drain. yes. The arrow here points, that the current is going into the drain, okay, through the channel and out through the source. Okay, if you think about it, that's a that's a good question. Here is the N channel MOSFET, all right? N channel MOSFET. This is the gate. Here is the source. Here is the drain, right? Now what I do is I apply a positive voltage on the gate. Okay, and make VDS more positive. Let, let's not make VDS more positive yet. So I apply a positive voltage on the gate. Electrons are beginning to line up here. Correct, that's the operation of NMOS transistor. So this is NMOS. Okay, so when I apply a more positive voltage on the drain, okay, the electrons are moving in this direction. So the direction of current is opposite to that of electron. So ID is coming out of the source. That's exactly what is shown using the arrow here. Okay, so ID 
is thinking. Make sense? Into the drain. Okay. Here, the opposite is happening. ID is flowing out of drain. So there is a very specific direction, and that direction is shown using the arrow here in the MOS and PMOS. For the MOS transistor, the current is sinking into the drain or going into the gain, the drain coming out of the source. Okay, so the current direction is that guy. Okay, the current direction is uh, from drain to source. Okay, for MOS transistor. For PMOS transistor, the current direction is from source to drain. Okay, the drain current is in the opposite direction. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay. So let's see. Let's pick some other values. Okay. Let, let me get rid of this part. I'm going to erase all of this part. Okay. okay. Now let's pick some other values. Let's pick some value for the um, green voltage to be, this guy to be three volts. This guy to be three volts and this guy to be two volts and VTN to be 0 0.5 volts, okay? What can you tell me about the region of operation for this guy? In this method of voltage is dropping from top to bottom, will get you there. It's not a foolproof method, but it will kind of get you there. What can you tell me? It's on. It's on, sure. Is it, that's correct. It's on, is it saturation or is it in linear region? Yes, yes. Saturated. Correct. You're right. It's in saturation region. Let me tell you why. Okay. Even without doing the math, I know for a fact that VD is equals to VG. So it's likely to be in saturation region. Um, VGS. This guy, what's VGS? The difference between these two terminals is one volt, okay? When this difference between these two terminals is greater than the threshold. So I'm not doing the math, I'm not doing, I'm not thinking in terms of, even though I'm thinking in terms of VGS, so on and so forth, I'm doing it more in a, um, in a, um, uh, looking at the figure itself, okay? Uh, the idea is this potential, the gate is higher than the source by more than the threshold voltage. VGS is one volt. Compare that to V threshold, which is 0 0.5 volts. Therefore, this is greater, so my MOSFET is on. Okay, right. Also, I'm not even doing all of the math in my head. I know for a fact that when these two voltages are equal, then VDS is equals to VGS, all right? That's exactly VD equals to VG means VDS equals to VGS. Therefore, if I do VGS minus VDH, I know for the fact that this guy is going to be greater than VGS minus VTH. So saturation. 
So I'm looking at this drain voltage and that is equals to gate voltage. So I don't even have to do the math. I simply, um, by observation on the figure, I, we can do the math now. V, what's the value of VDS? VD minus VS, which is one volt. Compare that to VGS, which is the same as VDS, VD, VG, three volts minus VS, that's one volt. Minus, don't forget this VTH, 0 0.5. So when the VD value and the VG value are the same, then VDS is definitely going to be VGS minus VTH, okay? So VDS is greater than VGS minus VTH. So it is in saturation region. Make sense? I'm going to eliminate, eliminate this. I'm going to do one more problem similar to this, okay? Because that's important to, let's see, duplicate this. I'm going to duplicate it over here. Okay. Okay. So let's pick some other values. Let's pick different values. For this time, why don't I let you pick the values? Okay. Any volunteers to pick a value for VDS, VD, VG, so on and so forth, terminal voltages? Just pick any value that you want to pick. Uh, maybe five volts for the gate. Gate is at five volts, okay. Uh, so drain voltage also maybe five volts. Drain voltage is also five volts, okay. So I tell you what, even without looking at any other information you haven't given me the value of v threshold you haven't given me the value of source right i can right away mm -hmm. tell you it can be either off or it can be saturation okay it will not be in linear beach and take my word for it now go ahead and fill in the blanks what value do you want to pick for v source uh three volts you want to pick a value of three volts for source. And what's the value for threshold? Uh, two. Two, okay. I know for a fact that this MOSFET is on because it is on and the gate voltage is equals to the drain voltage. It is going to be in saturation region, very similar to this problem, okay? So let's try something else, let's try. So, so far, so good. You're right. So, um, everybody with me so far, look at this VGS value. This potential is two volts. So, the gate is above the source. The gate is higher than the source by, oh, wait, wait, wait. It's just, that's a, that's a good point. So, it is going to be VGS is barely equals to the V threshold. So it's going to be just on. It's going to be on, not in linear, but just barely on, okay? Because it is on, it's going to be in uh, VDS. So v, what's the value of VGS? VG is five minus VS is three. So that compared to V threshold is exactly two volts. So the condition for turning on is VGS is greater than or equals to each threshold. So it barely satisfies that condition. So it is on. Now let's look for a saturation. I know for a fact VDS compared to VGS minus VTH, it's going to be greater than that. Okay, VDS, you can do the math. You'll see that VDS is greater than VGS minus VTH. Okay. Questions, uh, please. I think VGS 
uh, VDS might be smaller because it will be two volts and VDS, VDS minus V. Two volts. And VDS, oh uh, yeah, it will be good. Yeah, sorry. Zero. So I have another question for you. So this problem is good so far, but let's see if I can modify this just a touch, okay? Just a touch, okay? Let me see um, if I can modify this V threshold to be one value. I'm going to modify this V threshold to be one value one volt, okay? Now, I'm also going to change this VD value to be four volts. Now tell me what region of operation is this going to be in? Or first, um, we'll come back to that. Let me pick a value two here for VD. What is the region of operation here? Region of operation. On and the linear region. On the linear region, thank you. So again, um, you can go back to my, um, to my uh, rule of the thumb and see that the voltages from top to bottom seem to be going in the opposite direction. From drain to gate, I should expect to see a voltage drop, okay? But there seems to be a voltage increase there. So it could be a problem. It could be a problem. That does not guarantee a problem, but it could be a situation. We may have a situation. Let's look at VGS first. VGS is, VG minus VS, compare that to the V threshold. Two volts compared to V threshold, so it's on. Mm -hmm. So let's check saturation or linear. Okay, what's the value of VDS? Compare that to VGS minus V threshold. VD is two volts. V source is negative three volts. So this is a value of negative one. What's the value of VGS minus V threshold? VGS is two volts, right? We calculated VGS to be negative uh, two volts minus one. This is V threshold. So I have negative one less than one. So linear region VDS is less than VGS minus V threshold. So linear region, right? So that much you can see from the fact that when the voltages are dropping from top to bottom, this voltage is below the gate voltage, so that's a problem. So you can see the voltage is not dropping here as you go from top to bottom, from north to south. Then it points to a situation where the voltage, um, the MOSFET may be in, in linear region or off. We don't know, okay? So that's something we need to investigate. In this case, the voltages are dropping from top to bottom. This is three volts. Below that is three volts. Below that is two volts. So the MOSFET is more likely on and more likely on in saturation region. So that gives me a guess, a pretty good estimate as to where to begin. Okay, let's do this problem just a little bit more. Let's modify this to come back. Like I mentioned, I said, I'm going to come back to four volts. Okay, I'm going to come back to this um, problem with four volts. Now tell me what region of operation this is in. Mm. 
Yes. So it's on still. So it is on. Yeah. VTS is really good. And linear. No, two. Is it linear or is it saturation? Let's do the math. Uh, Let's do the we, yeah. I Go think ahead. it's equal like once we are getting a one it's volt equal. for VDS and If you do the math, you'll, um, you'll see that VDS is just equals to VGS minus VTH, which is barely the condition to, um, to be in saturation. So it's right on the edge of the saturation. Okay, you'll see how. Let's look at VGS value. What is VGS? VG minus VS. Compare that to V threshold. Just two compared to one. So it is on VGS greater than V threshold. So this condition implies it is on. Now the next thing to do is VDS. I'm going to compare it with VGS minus V threshold. What is the value of VDS? VD minus VS. So this is one volt. Compare that to VGS, which is two volts minus V threshold, which is one volt, okay? So in this case, VDS is one volt, VGS minus V threshold is one volt. So they're equal, VDS is equals to VGS minus VTH, okay? The condition for v VDS greater than or equals to VGS is on saturation, okay? So this MOSFET, is in saturation, but barely in saturation. If the VD value goes any further down, it's going to go into linear region. If it goes up, it's going to be in saturation region. So this is called edge when VDS is equals to VGS minus V threshold. This is called edge of saturation okay and you can see the voltages as you go from the top to bottom from north to south they should fall okay they should fall but that is not happening the voltage here is smaller than the gate voltage so it simply means you need to take a closer look doesn't mean um, it doesn't give you for a fact whether you're in linear saturation or on or off. It just says you have to investigate that a little further. Okay, we'll come back to talk about this a bit more. But for now, notice that that uh, this guy, the one on the right, is in the edge of saturation. Okay. This guy is edge of saturation, just barely in saturation. Make sense? So uh, like if it's in saturation, there's like a short kind of from the drain to the source. That's kind of the idea, right? If it is in saturation, um, there's a ID is half, mu and C oxide W over L, VGS minus VTH, the whole square. It's not quite short, but it's uh, um, very similar to very small resistance. There's a high current flowing through the source and drain. Okay. Okay. But if it's in linear, then like some of the currents being used to charge the capacitors uh, though, kind of is that the idea? Or in like linear separate? region, it's, it's a little different, not quite uh, charging the capacitances. But uh, the idea is that uh, there is not enough voltage on the drain to have a um, 
big enough current. Okay, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the operation a little bit more. But for now, just um, trust me that when it is off, it is off. When it is in linear region, there's a um, dependence of the current on the drain to source voltage. When it is in saturation region, the drain, uh, the voltage, the current, drain current is independent of the saturation. All it means is that the drain current is a constant in saturation region. Okay, we'll talk about that more. All right, thanks. Okay. So here is the, yes, sorry, I could not uh, clarify that further. Okay, here is the idea graphically, and I invite you to take a closer look at that. So the source voltage is at the lowest potential for the NMOS transistor. The gate, gate is in between. The drain should be higher. Okay, but it can go just one threshold voltage below gate and still be in saturation. Okay, the drain can be anywhere between VGF minus V threshold or up and still be in saturation. If it goes further down, it's going to be in linear region. So I welcome you to look at this figure and try to understand this um, further. So we'll come back and talk about this more and do some problems. Okay.